Well, hello, Wisconsin. It is great to be with all of you on a beautiful American holiday. Secretary Gene Scalia, our great friend, Senator Ron Johnson. To Derek Van Orden, to all of our fellow Americans from near and far, all across the Badger State, it is great to be with you here in La Crosse. And I can't think of a better place to be on an American holiday where we celebrate America's tradition of hard work and the American dream. For 79 years, you've been keeping the lights on here in Wisconsin. So to all the hardworking men and women of Dairyland Power, and to every American worker across Wisconsin, happy Labor Day. And you can grab a seat if you've got one. You know, before I go any further, allow me to bring greetings from another friend of mine who loves the Badger State, who I think is the best friend American workers have ever had sitting in the Oval Office at the White House. When I told him this morning that I was headed to La Crosse, I, I think he sounded just a little bit jealous. <laughs> so allow me to bring greetings. From a friend of this state and a friend of American workers, I bring greetings from the 45th President of the United States of America, <laughs> President Donald Trump. You know, I'm here because I stand with President Donald Trump. When this president stands up for faith and family and the American flag, I stand with President Donald Trump. When this president stands up to the radical left and their socialist agenda, I stand with President Donald Trump. And when this president stands up every day and fights for American workers and jobs, jobs, jobs. We stand with President Donald Trump. You know, four years ago, a movement was born, a movement of everyday Americans from every walk of life. And look how far we've come. Four years ago, we inherited a military hollowed out by devastating budget cuts an economy struggling to break out of the slowest recovery since the Great Depression. Terrorism was on the rise around the world, and we witnessed a steady assault on our most cherished values, the freedom of religion and the right to life. But in our first three years, what a difference the decision that Wisconsin made made. We rebuilt our military. We restored the arsenal of democracy, and we are once again giving our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guard, and our veterans the resources and the support that they deserve every single day. We revived our economy by cutting taxes across the board, rolling back federal red tape, unleashing American energy, and fighting for free and fair trade. We appointed judges to uphold all of our God-given liberties, including the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms. And I couldn't be more proud to be vice president to a president who has stood without apology for the sanctity of human life and for the freedom of religion of every American of every faith. And beyond all of that, throughout all of the last three and a half years, this president and this administration have stood with the men and women of law enforcement, and we will stand with them every day. You know, President Trump and I know that the men and women who serve in law enforcement are the best of us. They put their lives on the line every single day. They literally count our lives as more important than their own. And they deserve the respect of every American. Now, to be clear, 
Any incident involving the police use of force will always be thoroughly investigated, but there is no excuse for the rioting and looting that we have seen in Kenosha and in cities across the country. And this violence against civilians, against property, and against law enforcement must stop, and it must stop now. Now, President Trump and I will always support the right of Americans to peaceful protest. But rioting and looting is not peaceful protest. Burning businesses is not free speech. And those who do so will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. That's why President Trump took action just a few days ago. We sent 200 federal law enforcement officers into Kenosha. Working with the National Guard and local law enforcement, we quelled the violence. Under this president, I promise you, we will have law and order in every city in this country for every American of every race and creed and color. So help us God. Now, for months, all Joe Biden talked about was peaceful protesters as the American people watch businesses and communities in our major cities burn. Last week, Joe Biden, after three months of silence, spoke out against violence in every form it takes. But right after he said that, he criticized law enforcement. And Joe Biden never condemned Antifa. He never called out his campaign staff or his running mate for raising money to bail out violent criminals. And he never called on Democrat mayors to get their cities under control. You know, I think the people here in Wisconsin know. Joe Biden would double down on the policies that have literally led to violence in our major American cities. I mean, Joe Biden says America is systemically racist and that law enforcement has an implicit bias against minorities. When asked whether he'd support cutting funding to law enforcement, Joe Biden replied, yes, absolutely. But under President Donald Trump, I promise you, we will always stand with those who serve on the thin blue line of law enforcement. We're not going to defund the police, not now, not ever. Now, President Trump and I know what you all in Wisconsin know. We don't have to choose between supporting law enforcement and standing with our African-American neighbors and families to improve the quality of their lives, to improve public safety, create more jobs and better schools. I mean, from the first day of this administration, we've done both. And I promise you, we're going to keep supporting law enforcement and keep supporting our African-American neighbors and all of the minorities in every community in this city every day from here to come. So in three short years, with the support of the people of Wisconsin, we rebuilt our military, we revived our economy, we stood for our liberties and for law and order. And the result? I can tell you, having traveled to more than 30 countries as your vice president, America is respected in the world again. At home, our God-given liberties are more secure today. And in our first three years, there's only three ways you can describe those years. It was jobs, 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 right here in Wisconsin and all across America. It's true. I mean, with less taxes, less regulation, more American energy, and better trade deals, businesses large and small across this country created more than 7 million good-paying jobs in just three years. And on this Labor Day, it's, it's great to remember that, that wages were rising in those first three years. Wages were rising at their fastest pace in the last decade, and we couldn't be more proud that in those first three years, wages rose most rapidly for hard-working, blue-collar Americans. The forgotten men and women of America are forgotten no more.
And under this president's policies, manufacturing has come roaring back. You know, when Joe Biden was vice president, America lost 200,000 manufacturing jobs. And the last president actually said that those jobs were never coming back. You remember? It was the summer, four years ago, 2016. The president back then wondered aloud how you could ever bring manufacturing back to the heartland. He said, quote, what magic wand do you have? Well, we didn't need a magic wand. We just needed President Donald Trump in the White House. 500,000 manufacturing jobs in just three years. Beyond that, the lowest unemployment rate ever recorded for African Americans and Hispanic Americans. At the end of our first three years, more Americans were working than ever before. And let me just say, with with him present here today. None of that would have been possible without the strong and principled support of Senator Ron Johnson. Wisconsin, would you join me? Get on your feet and show how much you appreciate a man that's been fighting for Wisconsin values and fighting for Wisconsin jobs. Thank you, Senator Johnson. With our strong allies in the Congress, like your senator, we created the greatest economy in the world in three short years. We made America great again. And then the coronavirus struck from China. The people of Wisconsin deserve to know that before the first case of coronavirus spread from person to person, within the United States. President Trump took the unprecedented step of suspending all travel from China before the month of January was out. And I can tell you, having led the White House Coronavirus Task Force, that action alone saved untold American lives. And it bought us invaluable time to stand up the greatest national mobilization since World War II. It's true. At the President's direction, we marshaled the full resources of the federal government and the American economy. We partnered with private industry, reinvent testing. When I took over the task force in late February, we'd done no more than 8,000 tests total nationwide for the coronavirus. Today, with American ingenuity and high relief, we perform more than 800,000 coronavirus tests a day. We work with private industry to arrange for the production and the delivery of billions of supplies of personal protective equipment to our great doctors and nurses and hospitals all across America. We saw to the delivery of those supplies at the point of the need in one city after another where the impact was the greatest, where the challenge was the greatest. And I will tell you here in Wisconsin all across America, Every American should be grateful for our doctors, our nurses, and our health care workers and our first responders who have risen to the challenge in this hour of our trial. Now, our hearts go out to all the families who've lost loved ones during the course of this pandemic, including more than 1,000 families here in Wisconsin. I want to say to each and every one of them, you've always been in our hearts. And you'll remain in our prayers. But we're going to continue to move forward. Continue to develop medicines each and every day that are saving lives across the country. More therapeutics are becoming available each and every day. And I promise you, we're not going to rest. We're not going to rest until we have a safe and effective coronavirus vaccine for the American people and we put this virus in the past. It's amazing to think with Operation Warp Speed, the president initiated a project where, believe it or not, we have several vaccines that are already in the final stages of clinical trials. But we're not waiting until they're approved to produce the vaccines. At the president's direction, we're actually manufacturing 
vaccines even as we speak so that the moment that the FDA says that we have a safe and effective coronavirus vaccine, we'll have tens of millions of doses available for the American people. Now, I have to tell you, Joe Biden said not long ago that no miracle is coming. But here in America, we're in the miracle business. And we're going to have a safe and effective vaccine for the coronavirus before the end of this year. So we're slowing the spread. We're protecting the vulnerable. And we're saving lives. And each of us has a role to play. But in the midst of this pandemic, our president also worked with leaders in both parties in Congress and with Senator Johnson in particular to secure support for American families and for American businesses. It's amazing to think we were able to secure nearly $4 trillion in support to American families and enterprises. And the Paycheck Protection Program alone is estimated to have saved some 50 million American jobs. But I promise you, Wisconsin, we're going to continue to put the health of America first. And because of the strong foundation that President Trump poured in those first three years, and because of the unprecedented aid that we secured for families and businesses, after losing 22 million jobs at the height of this pandemic, we've already seen more than 10.6 Americans go back to work already. The American comeback has begun. In the last four months alone, we've literally, literally seen half of the Americans that lost their jobs go back to work. And that, that includes 200,000 Americans right here in the state of Wisconsin. So we're opening up America again. And we're opening up America's schools. Just last week, we spoke to educators around the country, leaders of uh, colleges and universities around America, to make sure they had the support and the guidance to be able to safely reopen their schools. And people all across the country are working to safely reopen our K-12 schools. And I'm proud to report to you that school teacher I've been married to for 35 years is already back in the classroom teaching art at her elementary school. But I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you particularly to the Dairyland employees who leaned into this effort to get our schools back open. On the plane on the way here, I learned that a lot of you volunteered at, at an area school to build plexiglass barriers. You removed furniture to make our classrooms safe for our kids. Thank you for being there for our kids and our teachers and our schools. Great job. Great job, Dairyland. So we've gone through a time of testing, but we're coming through it together. And the hardworking people of Wisconsin deserve to know. As we go through this time of testing, we're soon coming to a time for choosing. And the choice has never been more clear. I mean, it's amazing to think that in the middle of a global pandemic, Joe Biden wants to raise taxes by $4 trillion. And President Trump, for our part, not only cut taxes for working families and businesses large and small, but as we speak, we're, we're letting the American people keep more of what they earn. And I promise you, we're going to keep fighting for tax relief for working Americans every day. Where President Trump signed more laws cutting federal red tape than any president in American history, Joe Biden wants to bury the American economy under an avalanche of red tape, like his own version of the Green New Deal. And here at Dairyland Power, you deserve to know that Joe Biden and the radical left want to crush American energy and American energy jobs. They want to pass uh, their climate change agenda and cap and trade that would cost that would raise the cost of electricity for nearly every household and business in Wisconsin. President Trump, for his part, unleashed American energy, an all-of-the-above energy strategy. And as we stand here today, the United States is now a net exporter of energy for the first time in 70 years. We're energy independent. <laughs> I 
And when it comes to free and fair trade here in the heartland, we all remember NAFTA. Over in the Hoosier State, after NAFTA was signed into law back in 1995, we saw entire communities shuttered. And literally in the years since, 60,000 factories closed across the United States. And many of those jobs moved south of the border and overseas. But I saw this president work to keep the promises he'd made to the people of Wisconsin. He said we could do better than NAFTA. We could fight for the kind of free and fair trade that put American jobs and American workers first. He drove a hard bargain. And I'm here to tell you, the USMCA is a win for Wisconsin workers and a win for Wisconsin farmers. <laughs> Under the US-Mexico-Canada agreement, now Canada is also ending its unfair treatment of our dairy farmers. So important here in Wisconsin. The USMCA is actually expected to increase our dairy exports by more than $300 million in the next year. That's a win for Wisconsin. The experts also tell us the USMCA overall will create about 600,000 new jobs just right out of the gate, including 50,000 manufacturing jobs. You know, I heard that Joe Biden's running mate is in Milwaukee today. But dairy farmers in Wisconsin deserve to know that Senator Kamala Harris is one of only 10 senators to vote against the USMCA. She said it didn't go far enough on climate change. And here at Dairyland Power, you deserve to know. Senator Harris put their radical environmental agenda ahead of Wisconsin dairy and ahead of Wisconsin power. But under President Donald Trump, we will always put Wisconsin farmers, Wisconsin businesses, and Wisconsin families first. <laughs> Thanks to President Trump's leadership, NAFTA is yesterday and the USMCA is here to stay. But beyond trade with our neighbors, this president also stood strong stood strong with regard to China from day one. President Trump made it clear that the era of economic surrender is over. When we took office, literally half of our international trade deficit was with China, and President Trump acted. We imposed strong tariffs on China. We took action to end steel dumping. It was hollowing out our steel industry and manufacturing in this country. And every single day, we continue to stand firm demanding that China, demanding that China open up their markets, respect American private property, and play by the international rules. Joe Biden, he's been a cheerleader for communist China. He actually wants to repeal all the tariffs that are leveling the playing field for American workers. And recently, he actually criticized President Trump for suspending all travel to China at the outset of the pandemic. So I'll make you a promise. Whatever the other side wants to say or do, President Donald Trump and I are going to keep standing strong for American workers and American jobs until China comes to the table, lowers trade barriers, respects American properties, and levels the playing field. Because when the playing field is level, American workers can compete and win against any workers anywhere in the world. And finally, on this Labor Day, as we think about labor, we think about the cost of labor. It's one of the reasons why President Trump has made record investments in border security. As we stand here today, this president has already overseen the construction of more than 300 miles of a border wall on our southern border. And we've been enforcing our immigration laws all across America. I mean, the truth is that illegal immigration drives wages down. People know that. One of the reasons the people of Wisconsin ought to be concerned, Joe Biden is for open borders, sanctuary cities 
free health care for illegal immigrants that will continue to bring low-cost labor into our cities and our towns, undermining the wages of American workers. And in addition to enforcing our immigration laws and standing firm for the conviction that a nation without borders is not a nation, President Trump has also launched what we call the Pledge to America's Workers. We're encouraging businesses in every field to expand training opportunities for American workers, and it's already led to 16 million training and apprentice opportunities for American workers all across the country. That's why we call that future ready. So we've stood strong. We stood strong for a safer, more prosperous America. We've stood firm to make sure that those that are meeting the needs of families that are challenged in the midst of this pandemic have the support and the resources to have the care that every one of us would want their family to member to have. We've stood up for our values and stood up for American families. And on this Labor Day, American workers can be confident you have a champion in President Donald Trump. President Donald Trump, I can tell you firsthand, having served with him every day over the last three and a half years, he's the real deal. The man who says what he means means what he says. Never backs down. And I can tell you he's never stopped fighting for the working people of Wisconsin. But for all that we accomplished in those first three years, for all we've done to see our nation through this time as America's begun to stand up again, go back to work and back to school, that's just what President Trump calls a good start. And I promise you, I promise you that we're never going to stop fighting for working people all across Wisconsin and all across America until we bring this state and this nation back bigger and better than ever before. So thank you for the warm reception today. And I'm very thankful it's not that warm today. It's a beautiful day in Wisconsin. Good to be with all of you. More importantly, thank you for, thank you for what all of the hardworking families gathered here and those that might be looking on do for this country every day. And President Trump and I believe that all honest work is honorable that it's really been the people who make things, who grow things, who work with their hands, with the sweat of their brow, in the factory, in the field, that have made this country what it is today. I mean, it's been the hard work and the strength of working Americans, men and women like all of you here, people who believe in faith and family and patriotism and hard work, people who believe in the American dream, that have always and will always be the backbone of this country. So on this Labor Day 2020, I encourage you to keep pressing on. Keep showing the strength and the faith and the resilience that working people have always shown in the life of this nation. And keep standing with us. And I promise you, we'll keep standing with you. And finally, and finally, have faith. Have faith in the strength and resilience of the American people and the ability of hardworking Americans to see our nation through this challenging time and come all the way back, and then some. And have faith that even in these challenging times, those ancient words that Americans have clung to throughout the generations are still true today. They're above the mantle in our home. There they've been for more than 20 years. From the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. Have faith, as he said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. The future belongs to America and to hardworking Americans. And our hope is in him in this one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all.
So with faith in all of you and faith in him, I leave here today with renewed confidence. We're going to make Wisconsin and America stronger and more prosperous than ever before. And with President Donald Trump in the White House, with great leaders like Senator Ron Johnson serving Wisconsin, and maybe future leaders like Derek Van Orden finding his way into public life. With your continued support and with God's help, on this Labor Day, I just know we're going to make America great again. Again. Thank you all very much. God bless you. God bless Wisconsin. And God bless America. Happy Labor Day.